One of the good things about shifting the format of this show for now to a daily vlog is that it gives me a chance to work on some projects that I've been meaning to get to for a long time, but that just don't fit the format of a project-based show. You know, making my very specific printer stand or even my, my drill press cabinet or my roll around box for my dumbbells or my weight bench. These are all projects that don't really hold wide appeal, but I think that they're interesting to watch as the process unfolds. So I wanna show you what my next project is going to be. It's going to be an upgraded version of this knitting box that I made eight years ago for my wife. My wife knits and crochets a lot. So she has this box that sits on the side table next to the couch to hold all of her knitting and knitting accessories. However, after eight years of using this, she's discovered things that just don't work as well as she originally intended and so asked me, like, a couple of years ago to update this and make some improvements. So that's what I'm gonna do. The main feature I included on this box were these box joints, which I'm not going to use on my new version. And I also made this, I was experimenting with including a drawer that used those box joints and kind of slid in like that. I'm not gonna be using that feature either, but the problem with this drawer is the size. So what she's saying is that she uses this little tape measure to measure stuff and it doesn't fit in there very well. So she'd like the box to be a little bit wider, the drawer, and she'd like maybe more space. So I'm gonna include a second drawer up here that's even a little bit shallower so that she can, so she can sort out all these tiny little bits and bobs. And I, I'm sounding very British there. <laughs> bits and bulbs. This has these drop down compartments for knitting and knitting needles and crochet hooks and what all else is in here, but there's too much of that. She doesn't need that many spaces so deep. So what I'd like for it to do is make one compartment for knitting needles that goes all the way down and maybe for her scissors. And then the next one is going to come up a little bit. So it's gonna be shallower. And then this third compartment will be the shallowest yet because there's gonna be two, maybe even a third drawer up there. So there's just almost trays up on the top, shallow trays to store things. She likes having this compartment over here to store her plans or I guess their patterns and books and stuff and then this big compartment right here is just the stuff that she's just currently working on. I don't want to pull that out because I think I'm going to untangle it or, or something. So the overall size of the box though she likes and just wants it to remain the same. I want to make it out of solid wood like I did on that version so I've got a couple of oak boards over here that I think I can use that will work out okay. They're not exactly going to be as deep as this one, but she said that that would be okay. It's just slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just resaw this halfway through. I like having the thinner wood on this. I think three quarter inch lumber this thick would just look bulky, especially when you're dealing with something as delicate as you know, crocheting and knitting stuff. So the first order of business is to design a new box and then I can show it to her and see if it fits all of her specifications. In the meantime, let me catch up on a couple of other things in the shop. First of all, thank you all for your suggestions on what to do with this cord. For now, I'm using the Velcro, kind of it was my first thought. I don't know if it's the best solution or not, but it, it sure is easy. I've just got it screwed on here and then I can just attach it like that. A few people were saying that it might get clogged up with sawdust. Um, you know, I guess if that's a problem, I would just get a new one or clean it out or something, but I think it'll be okay for now. The uh, other suggestion that I really liked was a couple people thought about putting kind of almost like a tray in here, like a little box on the side that you could set the whole bunch just down in there. And I kind of like that idea too. So I'm gonna see how the Velcro strap works out. If it's, you know, proving a little bit cumbersome, I may actually make that little side tray on there. And then of course I got a lot of comments from people who told me I shouldn't have cut this notch out. I should have just put an elbow on that, but I didn't have an elbow and I didn't feel like going out and get one. And you know, 
This is a shop project. A little notch seemed to serve the purpose well. I need to turn my attention to this bandsaw. Well, not the bandsaw itself, but this little roll around stand that I kind of hobbled together a while back and it's never been good. Uh, let me show you. It's already, it's wobbly when it's locked in. But if I unlock these casters, <laughs> ah, it's like the whole thing is about to tip over if I try to move this around. And so it's only a matter of time before this comes crashing down. So I need to make a sturdier base for this thing. For one thing, this base doesn't extend out far enough so that the center of these casters isn't in the center of the base, it's, it's inset, and that helps to make it wobbly. By the way, a lot of people ask me about this bandsaw and whether I like it or not, because I've had it for maybe a year now, maybe a little longer. I got it because it was just super cheap and I needed a bandsaw at the time, so I got this from Harbor Freight, and it's Central Machinery. I don't know what that is, but you know, it was maybe $300 or something like that. It was pretty cheap as far as bandsaws go, and it does the job, but I would not recommend this for anybody. First of all, I would recommend a 14 inch bandsaw. I think anything less than that, and you're basically, it's just a scroll saw. This door here doesn't open up. You have to actually unscrew these and then remove that in order to change the blade. Same with this one down here. In order to change the blade or if you just need to adjust the tracking or tension so that's kind of a pain. The switch is way down here which is just really dumb and the dust collection over here is completely useless. It doesn't extract any dust at all. I think eventually I'll probably upgrade and just get a better saw but but I don't use a bandsaw that much for at least what I'm doing here with Woodworking for Mere Mortals. So you can see right here how narrow this base is compared to the size, I've got spider webs all over in here, compared to the size of the bandsaw. Yeah. I think another problem with this were the casters that I used. What I did is I bought these post kind. It's like just a single bolt that goes through because my idea was that I was going to be able to put it directly into the bottom of the bandsaw. But the way this is laid out here, it just wasn't working out. So I had to build this separate base. But yeah, you can you can see how wobbly those things are. So that wasn't a good choice. I can use some of this leftover plywood from my drill press cabinet. Okay, I think we're in business here. It's just something that's been bothering me for a while now. So, you know, since I don't use this very often, I don't even know if I need to store it there. Now I may want to just rearrange my shop so I can store this off to the side somewhere. 